good to be in God's house Amen. again this evening. Good to be saved. Good to see uh, everyone in the Lord's house. Josh, just leave those open right there. Uh, I know normally we, we shut them at service time, but uh, let's just leave those open back there. I appreciate everybody being here in the Lord's house. Amen. 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 There'll be some others coming on in. I can see them coming up the drive right now. And, uh, so uh, they'll be on in here in uh, just a minute or two. But it, it is certainly good to uh, be back in God's house on this Wednesday evening. Amen. Amen. It's good to have Sister Patricia Knight with us. Amen. 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 All the way from down below Amen. South America somewhere. <laughs> All the way in Florida. She got to come up and see her son, Bert. Amen. We've been praying for him here Amen. at the church. Well, praying for all of them. Praying for Sister Knight. Praying for Bert and Landa. Praying for their whole family. And uh, we want to continue praying for them. Uh, that the Lord would help them during these uh, difficult times. Uh, I don't uh, have to tell you how desperately we need to pray for our nation. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, our, our nation is in a, uh, just a desperate situation. And uh, <clears throat> we, we have got to take it to the one who can do something about it. Amen. And uh, that's only the Lord. The Lord knows what's going to happen. He, he knows what's going to happen in November. Uh -huh. He knows who the next president is. Right. Uh, if there's going to be a next president. Right. Uh, and uh, he knows when his son's coming to get to church. Amen. Amen. Uh, and uh, so let's just uh, really be much in prayer uh, that uh, as long as God allows us to stay here, that the Lord uh, would save our nation yes. and, uh, and uh, keep us from the evils that are uh, wanting to come upon us. And, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, say anytime a preacher says anything that has to do with a nation that he's getting political, well, you'd have to talk to Isaiah about that and you'd have to talk to Jeremiah and you'd have to talk to Moses and you'd have to talk to Abraham you'd have to talk to all uh, of uh, God's men in the past mm -hmm. because it does it affects our nation right. and right. Uh, uh, you know the America that we grew up in uh, those my age and uh, some of you older you know it's not the America that it was when we were kids and uh, I mean, we're we're staring down the barrel of a generation that cares nothing about our constitution. That's right. right. That's right. Shame. And right. that it wouldn't bother them for one. They don't even realize the impact that it would have on this country if this country became uh, a democratic socialist nation. That's right. Right. And uh, all that is is communism. That's right. I promise yep. you, that's all that is. And our forefathers fought and died, kicking and screaming to get away from stuff just like that. Right. So that we could have a free nation. Freedom's not free. Mm -hmm. right. There's a high price that was paid that we could have this country uh, the way we are. Right. Uh, and so we need to pray. Pray that God would save our nation, that God would save our land. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, just uh, over and over, I can't say that enough, how urgently we need to pray and, uh, and do our part. We, we've got to do our part uh, as citizens and as Christians. Um, and things are getting worse and worse. Things are getting worse and worse. I saw a, a post the other day. A man was just talking about, uh, you know, the impact that churches have in the communities and uh, how needful the gospel is and how the gospel was the answer. And uh, there were people come out of every crevice and, and uh, hole that they could climb out of to attack what that man said, just about the gospel being the answer. Right. Right. Uh, we're living in a day people that just soon shake their fist at God. Oh my, shame. In the Bible, right. they just soon spit on it or burn it, burn it. Right. 
Right. Uh, they don't have no use for it. Right. And reprobate. Reprobate concerning the faith. Many past feel. Uh, their conscience is seared. Right. Right. Uh, their <clears throat> minds blinded, the Bible says. Right. And it is only the light of the glorious gospel of Christ Amen. that can shine unto them Amen. and open their eyes. <laughs> And it'll take a miracle of God to open people's eyes. So right. let's uh, really, really pray. Really pray for the condition of our nation, the condition of our people. And uh, pray for one another. Pray for our churches. Uh, that the Lord would help us. We've got one letter here that I'm going to read. And uh, I didn't know I was even going to say all that I did. But we'll try to hasten through this. Dr. Scott Call, we support him as the president. Uh, and General Director of Macedonia World Baptist Mission. We love Dr. Caudle. And uh, <clears throat> he writes Proverbs 27 1 Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. As I prayed about the first paragraph of our uh, next prayer letter, this was the verse that kept coming to mind. I believe if the worldwide pandemic has taught us anything, it has driven home the truth of Proverbs 27, 1. It is uh, not amazing how quickly things can change. At the same time, uh, what a joy it is to know that our wonderful Lord never changes. Amen. Just this morning during our daily devotions here at our home office, uh, our West Indies field director, Brother David Finley, reminded us of Malachi 3, 6 where the word of God says, for I am the Lord, I change not. The world is a much different place than it was just since our last prayer letter. Things have certainly changed. However, our Lord remains the same. His cause and his work continue, and therefore, so do we. Amen. He says, I'm pleased to report uh, that the services uh, uh, our home office provide for Macedonia missionary families have not wavered over the course of the last few weeks. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. I mean, with so many people uh, having to quit, you know, work, not being able to work, uh, for the support to continue to come in for the office and for the missionaries faithfully. And I'm, I thank the Lord for God allowing us to do that right here at Mission Amen. Hill, to be able to continue to send in our mission support to our missionaries uh, while all this was going on. So that's a blessing. Uh, he says, it's no small undertaking to handle the finances of every Macedonian missionary family, yet our staff has continued to do so without interruption. Beyond providing the daily services uh, we offer our missionaries, our office staff has continued to implement a new software accounting system. This alone has resulted in many extra hours of training, planning, and preparation. Uh, he goes on down and says, Throughout the course of the quarantine time, I was reminded there is always something that can be done to reach others with the gospel. Recently, Cassie, that's his wife, has been burdened personally to reach our neighbors in our own community, having realized that world missions uh, does not begin across the sea, but rather across the street. She proceeded to spend a great deal of her quarantine time uh, writing each neighbor personally. Having acquired each of their personal mailing uh, addresses, uh, she not only sent them uh, her letter, but also a track which included a very clear presentation of the gospel. I was thrilled by her initiative but I was also challenged by it as well. That just goes to prove that waiting time never has to be wasted time. Amen. Remember, friend, that there are, uh, is someone only you can reach with the gospel. Will you, if not who, if not now, when? And uh, so that's a, a solemn thought to think about. Mm -hmm. You ever thought about that, that there's somebody that maybe only you could reach. Mm -hmm. That's that's a that's a that's a deep thought. That's a deep thought. What are we doing to reach those around us? That, that's a blessing. Amen. That'd be a blessing. 
uh, write a letter to your neighbor or send them a card and let them know how much you love them, how much you're praying for them, how much that Jesus loves them. Amen. Amen. All right. We want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And, uh, of course, again, we've mentioned uh, several requests. Uh, somebody may have a request on your heart tonight before we go to the Lord in prayer. Do remember that. Someone else. Our part time neighbor has been having a lot of health problems the last month or so. Amen. Amen. Let's certainly remember that request. Amen. Uh, someone else. Remember that request. Remember Brother Jones. Okay. Someone else. Just pray that we have the Lord Jesus to take both home to him and to cause it all to be easier for him. Mm -hmm. And that he would let them be with all of our families. Amen. Amen. of ours out from Little River, her son um, is the same age as John. Uh, he's in the Army and he's stationed near uh, Washington, D.C. And they have him on guard duty around that area for all these riots going on. And um, he has a cousin, her name is Darren, and she's in the military. I don't know where she's stationed, but they've called her. She's on alert to go to one of these areas where all these riots are going on. And um, his, the, her son's name is Alex. He's not saved. He's been in church his whole life. She doesn't believe that he's saved and, um, you know, had some time of rebellion. And uh, he's been calling the family, asking them to pray for him. So uh, pray that the Lord would use this time to either win him back or uh, that he just get his life right with the Lord. Um, but that God would keep him and uh, the, the cousin born safe during this time. Amen. Let's remember that. And the, <clears throat> there's a barber over here off the highway between uh, Young Harris and Hiawassee. A little barber shop that sits off the side of the road. A uh, gentleman, he's got a grandson that's in the police force that's been sent to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And he asked us to pray for, for his grandson. And uh, I want you to remember John. Uh, he finally... He got a call yesterday, I believe it was. Uh, his job is ready out there in Greensboro. They need to start Monday. So uh, this is his last service with us for a while. So uh, you pray for pray for him. As, uh, he goes out that way and gets, uh, gets settled, gets started in this new job, that the Lord would help him to be a witness and uh, being a part of a, New church, and uh, so uh, you just just remember him in prayer. Anyone else? Brother Mark, all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you know, most of my life, I've heard politics and religion don't mix. Separation of church and state. This is not what the Constitution says. But, right. And 
good men have been intimidated not to run for elected office when we've had evil men. Who was it that made that statement? Was that uh, it's a historical figure that made that statement uh, about you know evil abounding and succeeding? You know, all all that it takes is for good men to do nothing. I can't remember who it was. Was it Edmund Burke? I can't remember right off. May have been Ronald Reagan, it could have been George Washington, but I, I, I remember it was somebody historical. <laughs> somebody, somebody bigger than me, amen. What a statement. Anyone else before we pray? I'm going to uplift you your hand, unspoken. God sees the hands, He knows the heart. So if you want to get in the altar and pray, uh, there's uh, very few spots as we. Still try to stay spread out, but you can pray right where you are, okay? And uh, you pray audibly as I pray audibly, okay? <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. In the precious name of Jesus, we bow. God, we do want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your love, and your mercy and grace. All the you have in this court. Heavenly Father, I pray and I ask, God, you look down upon us, forgive us of our sins, cleanse us, fill us, Lord of heaven, with your Holy Spirit, fill us with your words, help us, God, to remember your words, help us, Jesus, to walk in your way. Pray, Lord, you give me wisdom and understanding, your seed and grace, largeness of heart. Help us, O Lord God, to know, Lord, how to lead thy people, God, what to be thy people. Lord, I pray you unction eyes us and anoint us, God, tonight. Help us, dear Lord, to deliver thy word. God bless your people tonight, I pray to worship. Bless every need in this hour and every request. God, for them that's sick, Lord, we Lord, I thank ask you that you God. touch them and heal them according to thy will, thy power, dear Lord. God, we ask for them that's back, son, Lord, draw them back to yourself. Lord, for them that's lost, for that Christ, that they might be saved before that it's too late. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you uh, build us up, strengthen us, help us, dear Lord, save our nation. God, I pray you uh, put a hedge about it, drive out the evil, God, the sin and iniquity, dear Lord of heaven. God, I pray that you purge us, dear Lord. God, by your precious blood, your Heavenly Father, I pray that God you have mercy upon our nation, our country. Dear Lord Jesus, God, please, oh Lord of heaven, God, don't let evil, God, wickedness, communism, God, take over. Dear God, liberalism, dear Lord, have mercy upon us and help us. Oh God, you know of the great price that's been paid. Thank you, God, for the price your son paid so we might be saved, that we might be free, that we might have life. God, many, many of our forefathers, oh God, that laid down their lives that we might be free. Dear Lord, this nation wants under God, indivisible. Dear Lord of heaven, help us. God, may we turn back to thee. God is a people. God in this land, I pray. Please, God, have mercy upon us and help us. Lord, we ask and pray. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Come, dear Lord of heaven. Get your people. Lord, fix what only you can. God, we'll thank you for all you do. We ask in Jesus' name. Mike, can you come lead us in a couple of songs tonight? We'll sing, sing a congregation. Let yeah. Andrew and the folks come on. Sing, sing tonight. All right. Sing. Sure.
Right, let's all stand and uh, we'll get the Songs of Faith, 233. 233. Victory was won at Calvary. Amen. Amen.
stood right there and sung it for another <laughs> half an hour. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You get the feeling of the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. Begin to stir your soul. Begin to strengthen you spiritually. Begin to warm you on the inside. Fill you with His love. Yes. His redemption becomes real to us. Amen. That's salvation and the eternity of the life that God has breathed into us. Amen. Amen. It's washed over us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is it going to come sing for us tonight? Amen. All right. Bless the Lord. Let's pray for them while they come. Okay. Somebody may have a testimony while they're coming and getting set up. I just want to thank the Lord for saving me and thank the Lord for the opportunity to have some of my kids and grandkids come in town. I haven't seen them in yeah. so long, and the Lord afforded a time that we could spend together. I, I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Someone else? Certainly has been a blessing to be with you folks these past few services. I've enjoyed myself and been able, being able to sing and preach to y'all. Amen. I'm glad one day, I know this is the last service for John here, and that makes it kind of special. And then we're heading down Friday, so it's the last time we'll be here for a bit. But I'm glad he's coming today because of his blood. There's a place we're all going to go. No more parking up there. Amen. Right. All be together. Thank the Lord.
so well walking along a lame man begging alms by the gate. Straightway they told me no silver nor gold, but for you a great treasure awaits. Such as I have given I thee in the name of our Lord, rise up and
enjoyed that singing, Amen. didn't you? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Appreciate it. all the singing, the testimonies, everything that's uh, been done this evening for the Lord. Thank God for that. And, uh, <clears throat> you've got your Bible, turn with me to the book of the Proverbs. Chapter 1. The book of the Proverbs. Chapter 1. I had, uh, I'll try to be as brief as the Lord will help me to be this evening. The Lord give me this thought, uh, and uh, I think it'll be a help to everybody. Uh, but He give it He give it to me in in light of uh, John leaving our house and uh, stepping out on his own and going out on his own. And there's a lot of wisdom to be drawn from right. Proverbs. Amen. The first seven chapters are specifically written as words to a son or to sons. The instruction of Solomon to his sons. And uh, this instruction is still good. It would save a lot of people a lot of heartache, a lot of, a lot of problems if they would heed the instruction, if they would teach these instructions to their children. And, you know, I, I, I know that you understand this, you that have children, especially grown children, children that have stepped out of the house, there's... Uh, no greater desire, I guess, uh, seemingly, and I've said this here before, like the Apostle Paul was talking about his spiritual children, to see that they walk in truth, that they would continue on in the things of God. None of us want to raise our children and then see them go away from the Lord. Right. right. Or, or go away from the things that we've instilled in them. Amen. The things that we've tried to teach them. The things that we've tried to instruct them. To put in their life. To guide them. To be a, a compass. Mm -hmm. And we pour ourselves into our children. Amen. My children are not my friends. They're my children. I, I, I'm friendly with my children. I love my children more than anyone. But I, I'm not put here to be their buddy. Right. I'm put here to be their daddy. Amen. Amen. Same way with a mama. Put here to be uh, the guide of the house. Amen. And how we guide them. How we... Uh, you instruct them what we pour into them. And I want to say, you know, kids are like a, a glass. You can't, uh, you can't pour junk into a glass. And then about halfway up, decide, oh, I better get this clear water in there now. Right. Because it's, it's not going to be clear water. It's going to be a bunch of junk mixed with some clear water. There's never too young to teach the children uh, uh, that God has given you the ways of the Lord. I, I have no, listen, I'm going to say this, then I'm going to read. Uh, if we're not careful, we make the mistake of saying, well, they're, you know, they're young. 
if, if, you, if you raise a child a certain way, when are you going to turn it toward the Lord? Really turn it toward the Lord? Because when, when they get up a, a certain age, it's going to be hard then to, to teach them, oh, this is wrong. This is, you know, we, we really, you know, this is not the way that, that God would, you know, they're scratching their head and wondering, well, why did they let me all this time? Mm. Right. Yeah. Whereas if, if we instruct them from their youth, from their infancy, listen, that's the, the, that's the, the, the crucial time. In, in a child's life. You can't wait till they get teenagers and then try to put morals right. in it. Sure. Right. right. It's true. Right. But he, listen, I don't know of anything greater that you and I could do or desire. Our heart as a parent is to see them go right. Amen. To see them blessed, surely. To see them follow after the Lord. To have God in their life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and you know we, we almost. Uh, you know get to the place of our soul. That we're uh, you know. I know within myself sometimes. I catch myself. Almost in a place of begging. Desperate. That I, I want them to grab a hold. Not of what, you know, my personal views. I want them to go beyond, beyond my Christianity. Right. I want them to live for God in a way that I, I never could. Right. I'd like to keep them from some scars that somebody didn't stop in my life. Right, right. amen. And, and the Bible tells us a few things here. Now, uh, Solomon is... The Proverbs of Solomon, verse 1 of chapter 1. The, the son of David, king of Israel. No doubt this man had a lot of things said to him by his father that he did not take his advice. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's going to say, he's going to mention something here in the message about that. But I, I want us to just look at, look at some of the things uh, right here, just in the first couple of chapters, okay? We don't have time to get into all of it. But the, the first one I, I, I wanted to look at in, in chapter 1, verse 8, listen to how he says this. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. He's asking him, almost in a desperate way, I want you to hear. I mean, don't just, don't just act like you're listening. I really want you to hear what I'm saying. Right. Because what I'm saying is instruction for your life. Amen. And, 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 you know, fathers give their children a certain amount of instruction. But let's be honest. And the Bible teaches it. And he mentions it right here. And forsake not the law of thy mother. It's the mother that puts laws in a child's life. Things that will mold them and shake them to the core. Things that will be a law to them for the rest of their life. Some absolutes. And he says, I want you my son, hear the instruction of thy father. Really listen, listen. You should take to heart what your father says to you. Especially if he's saying to you what God would have him to say. Amen. Don't just dismiss that. I mean, it's important to hear. Don't gaze. You know, some kids, when you're talking, you're looking at them right in the eye and they're looking right through you almost. Right. They're not really listening. Right. Mm -hmm. But he's asking him to 
hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Forsake not the law of thy mother. You know, it's, it's, it's a fact that most children, when they leave the home, leave the instruction of their parents. Things that, that was tried to be instilled in them, things that they, they told them over and over and over. Why? Because they knew what they needed in their life. And they knew that this needed to be a law in their life. This is something that they, they needed to understand. They needed it to, to bring it in their heart and, and accept it right. as true, as a, a, a place to gauge their life, a, a degree, listen, I, I mean, something that they can always go back to, something that they can absolutely live by. Amen. And he said, forsake not the law of thy mother. The things your mother has put in you, don't forsake them. Amen. Don't forsake what your mother has put in you. Amen. Things that she has prayed over, things that she has worried over, things that she has went to God over to put in your life, to tell you over and over again, it's repetition uh, to, to make sure that something would stick. Don't forsake those things. Don't forsake them. They're that important. They are that important. For they shall be an ornament of grace. That word ornament, <clears throat> it, uh, it notes an adding, an ornament of grace. Under the, it's an adding of grace. The law of thy mother is an adding of grace to your life. Do you know what a godly mother does? She is trying to add grace to your life. Add grace to your life. To, to add these graces in your life right. that, that can only come from God and through God. And you have to hold them and not forsake these graces, these ornaments of grace under thy head. It'll be a chains about thy neck. He said, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Amen. There's going to be sinners in you, son. That's right. Yeah. Amen. You better believe that. Amen. They're going to come out of every nook and cranny That's to right. entice you. Amen. They're going to come at you from every angle. The Amen. devil will make sure he tries every device. He tries every avenue. Right. And all he's wanting with at the start is just a toehold. Right. That's right. He, he, he don't have to get his whole leg in the door of your life. I mean, just crack it open a little bit. Are you listening to me? The best thing you can do is slam that door shut and remember the law of your mother. Amen. Remember the law of your mother. Hear the words and the instruction of your father. Amen. Amen. He told him, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Why? Because Solomon was enticed. And Solomon found out those enticements led to vanities. Right, right. Led to hurt and vanity. That's all it does. It's an enticement. Sin, listen to me, there's pleasure in it for a season. Right. That's it. Right. It never fulfills. It never fills you up. It will never satisfy. Right. And he said, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Consent thou not. You know, I, I used to, when I'd go over to Egypt, there was people all the time, I mean, in crowds, trying to sell us trinkets, trinkets of the pyramid, you know, trinkets of uh, 
the Sphinx and, and, and papyrus paper and, 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 you know, just anything, anything. I mean, just constantly, you know, putting things in our face, trying to, trying to sell us on something. And you couldn't stop and talk. If you stopped and even looked at them, they knew they had you. But they wouldn't stop talking. Oh my. They'd engage you the rest of the time. If you walked, they walked. I mean, they'd, I mean, it'd just about get to the point where you'd buy something just to get rid of it. But you know what we were taught? Don't consent. No. Right. Don't even consent. Don't consent to them. Because I tell you, amongst those crowds, when, when some of them are trying to entice you and get you to sell you know, their stuff, there's always somebody else in that crowd looking to rob you. Oh my. Yeah. And they're good. They'd have your wallet took out of your back pocket before you even knew it. They'd have your purse took. Your passport, gone. Mm. Don't consent. They're only for your hurt. Right. The enticements are only for your hurt. Mm. It's not for your help. Right. Now in chapter 2, he said in verse 1, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, if thou wilt, See, it's a choice that every son or daughter is going to have to make. Amen. You've got to decide, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. You've got to determine in your heart, I will. I will listen. I will stand. Amen. I will keep the law of my mother. I will not shame her. Amen. I will not shame her and shame her name and shame what she's taught me. I will not before the world. I am absolutely going to receive their words. Amen. I'm going to hide their commandments within me. Hide them deep. Right. He said, in the, he's talking about wisdom. And he said in verse 4, If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Listen, these things, there are people around the world that would give everything if somebody had just give them a little bit of the wisdom that's been dropped to us by bucket loads. That's right. To give them some direction yeah. in life. Even in my own life, I've said it many times to my children. I wish someone would have told me what I'm telling them when I was their age. Right. I yeah. wish I would have known. I wish I could time travel and go back and tell my younger self, stop! Don't go that way. Amen. Yes. This is going to affect you later on. This is going to this is going to be a torment to your mind. Are you hearing me? Right. This will save you a lot of trouble, a lot of heartache. Yes. If you'll not, and if you'll do this, you'll find life. Amen. While I'd like to got saved younger. Amen. I would have. I'd have loved to got saved younger. Yes. There's people around the world walking aimlessly in darkness and they don't know the way. They don't even know that they're dead the way they are. Right. If somebody, somebody would just give them a little. It is as a hid treasure. It preserves the way of the saints at the end of verse 8. It gives you discretion. Verse 11. And discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. You know what these instructions that your father gives? This law of your mother. It makes you a discreet person. It makes you have discretion. It makes you know. 
it'll keep you from walking in an ABC store, let alone buying something. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 I said it'll, it'll even keep you from pulling into that right. parking lot. Right. Amen. Right. Whether you whether you've got the, the the you know a desire for it or not, right. discretion. You don't even want to be sitting there. Right. right. That's right. That's what discretion does. Amen. Discretion, friend, uh, causes me and you to act morally in a way that the world does not understand. Amen. Amen. It's good. And discretion shall preserve thee. Amen. Listen, just. Some of that discretion that's been put in your life by those laws of your mother can preserve you. Right. Can keep you from being spoiled. Right. right. Amen. Can keep you from, from the rot. Amen. Can keep you uh, from, from fading away. Amen. It'll preserve you. To deliver thee in the way of the evil man. From the way of the evil man. Discretion does that. It'll deliver you from the way of the evil man. The man that speaketh forward things. A man that's very subtle or a woman that is. Things that you may not even see coming, but discretion will throw up a red flag. Mm -hmm. This don't feel right. Mm -hmm. This ain't right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is not the way. Their ways are crooked, verse 15. This young man was warned here in chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, of a strange woman, the stranger which flattereth with her words. But now, what was she before she became the strange woman? Which forsaketh the guide of her youth. She was a young girl. Yeah. Right. She was a young, innocent girl that <clears throat> forsook her guide. <clears throat> right. That left the laws of her mother. That left the instruction of her father. And now she is the strange woman and she's enticing the young man. She's going to destroy the youth of that young man like her youth was destroyed. And Solomon is warning him of her because of her ways. But she had the same thing. She had a guide. Verse 17. She had a guide. She had a covenant with her God. This woman was not always strange. She did not always flatter with her words. She was young and she had a guide. That was the, the compass that her family put in her. It was the laws of her mother and the instruction of her father. And she had a covenant with her God. But Amen. she forgot that covenant. Right. Right. And she forsook her guide. Right. Now I'm going to tell you something, boy or girl. When you forsake that, mm -hmm. it's destructive. Right. Amen. It's destructive. And it's not, you know, well, uh, you know, my sin just affects me. Oh, no, 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 no. What happened to her now, it's going to rub off on this young man she's trying to advise. Right. Mm -hmm. Your sin don't just affect you. Right, right. It affects those around you. Amen. It's a stumbling block to those around you. Right. Why? Because you want company. Right. Right. Amen. It's good. Man. You want company. Right. And you know the righteous is not going to sit with the ungodly. Right. Yeah. Amen. So you've got to make sure that they are. Comfortable with their company. Right. Oh my. Listen. In uh, chapter number three, he said, My son, forget not my law. Let thine heart keep my commandments. Again, he's 
begging him. And he gives him a promise. He said, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. If you'll not forget my law and if you'll, if you'll keep in your heart my commandments, if you'll keep the law of your mother, it'll put length of days in your life, long life and peace they shall add. Look at verse 22. He said, so shall uh, they be life unto thy soul and grace unto thy neck. Chapter 4, verse 10, he said, hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Now listen, only God knows the day. And it's appointed unto man wants to die. And somebody could be appointed to leave out younger than others. But I'll tell you what will happen. Regardless of when your appointment is, forsaking these things will surely shorten your day. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. And God said, not forgetting them will lengthen your day. <coughs> not forgetting them will lengthen your day. Amen. That's what he's telling them here. Amen. He said in verse 3 of chapter 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Here's the big one. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Don't you ever get to the place where you think you're wiser yeah. right. than the law of the, your mother. Don't ever get to the place where you think you know better than the wisdom of your father. Right. Amen. Be not wise in thine own eyes. He said, Verse 9, honor the Lord with thy substance. Don't ever forget to do that, son. Amen. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. Amen. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy press shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son, in whom he delighteth. You remember how that I have corrected you? The patience and the steps that have been taken. Amen. And that God would correct you in the same way. It's not always, most people's got God as his correction is beat us over the head first time we do something wrong. And that's not God's correction. No. You're exactly right. God's correction is a loving father, an instruction, a reminder of his law, a plead to come to him and reason. That's his first step. Amen. I believe, with all my heart, I believe that. Amen. It's not a it's not a whipping post. No. Right. He tells him in verse 21, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. You see, you've got to keep it before you. Verse 26, For the Lord shall be thy confidence. Remember that. 
that in the Lord and in his word and in his ways, that's what would bring confidence in your life. And shall keep thy foot from being taken. You know how many people's foot's been taken? Where they were grounded. Grounded. feet were taken away from everything that they were grounded in. They walked away from it. So you have the choice. Chapter 4, I'm about done. Chapter 4, verse 1. Hear ye children, the instruction of a father. Of a father. Now Solomon's saying, hear children, the instruction of a father. And attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. It's just not my way. These are the ways of God. Amen. And look what he said. Verse 3. For I was my father's son. Tender. And only beloved in the sight of my mother. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father. I was my father's son, tender, and only beloved. You see, I wasn't always old, my dad. I was a son once. I was in your shoes. And I knew what it felt like to be there. And I knew what was going through your mind. And I knew the temptation. And I know the drawings. And I know the decisions that have to be made. I bet Solomon's thinking, boy, I wished I'd have, I wished I'd have kept everything my father David told me. I was a son. I was a son. Now I'm a father. One day you're going to be the father. Right. Amen. You're a son now. One day you'll be the father. And then you'll see clearly, oh so clearly, right. the desperation of a father to a son, of a mother's law to her children. Right. Just how desperate it is that we want to, you to take that in and not forsake it. Right. Because it will guide you. It will keep you. Amen. He said in verse 4, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. That's what David told him. Let your heart, Solomon, retain my words. Let your heart, really let them sink in deep. Retain them. That means not to forget them. Not to let them slip. Not to let them be forgotten. Not to let them disappear. Not to be let the fowls come and sift them away. Retain my words. Get wisdom and get understanding. Verse 10 of chapter 4, he said, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. The years of thy life shall be many. Verse 14, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. It's not even an option. Don't go that route. Verse 20, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. You know, each one of these have a different revelation about it. My son, attend to my words. My son, receive my sayings. It's a difference. My son, let them not depart from thine eyes. 
Each one of them is saying something different about the words that the Father is giving to the Son. And here at last, he says, attend to them. What's he talking about? Well, it's like a vineyard that needs tending. You have to go up and down every row. You check every plant. You clip. You prune. You're keeping that. You're attending to it. Why? You don't want the weeds to overrun it. You don't want to lose part of that garden. No. Right. To disease or, or bugs. You're attending to something. And he's saying, my words, you need to attend to them. You need to go back over them. And you need to brush over them time and time again. Right. And remember and recall them to heart. I can't tell you the thing that I wished I could remember that my granddaddy told me. He was like a father to me. He was a spiritual father to me. I've got my earthly dad, but my granddaddy was my spiritual father. There's a lot of things that he said I hope I don't never forget. Amen. Amen. Tend to my words, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. This is the last one. I'm done. Out of your heart are the issues of life. When you think about all the issues of life, Whatever it may be, love, hate, relationships, marriage, children, work, education, spiritual understanding, any issue you can think of, see, out of the heart, and we've tried to put understanding down in there with all that yeah. and moms tried to put laws down in there mm -hmm. why so that when those issues come out they're lawful mm -hmm. and they're godly yeah. they're influenced by the way of God the direction you take is influenced into the ways of God All the issues of life are going to are going to come out of that. Now, what did Jesus say? It's not that which goeth in, that which cometh out, that can defile a man. Right. I want you to stand this evening. I'm <clears throat> I'm done. Again, I I hope something's been said to be a help and a blessing to you. John, don't forget the laws of your mother. Amen. Attend unto our words. You see, for every child that mom and dad in your life, they're put there should be a mouthpiece for God to their children. A lawgiver. A grace giver. Amen. While she plays something, uh, you can pray right where you are or if you want to come pray, you can come pray. There's some spots in the 
altar. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, for this evening. Thank you for the service. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word. Thank you for all the songs and the testimonies. Thank you for the prayer time. Lord, I pray you bless your people. Lord, bless our children. Help us as parents. God, to guide them in the right way. God, to put in them the things, God, that be pleasing to you. Lord, we'll thank you for all you do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. While she plays, the altar's open. your attention this evening. Does anybody have a word before we dismiss? Honor thy father and thy mother that the day thy days may be long upon the earth. Amen. And this is the first commandment with promise. With promise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's a blessing. You know it? The first commandment that God hung a promise on it if he'd keep it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone else? I thank the Lord for giving me parents that it's Please. a privilege to honor. You know, I've Bless failed you guys in you, many Lord. ways, but I pray that God would help me be able to honor you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, son. Amen. Anyone else? All right. Remember, service is Sunday, Sunday morning. Starts at 1045, okay? And uh, go pray and come and pray. All right? May the Lord bless you. The offering, we usually on Wednesday night take up a mission offering. The plates are out there in the table. Most everybody knows. Just as you exit, there's a table. And the plates are marked tithes and missions, so you can put it in the proper plate. All right. God bless you. And uh, again, you're at liberty.